I first monetized my YouTube channel on May 17th, 2024, and in this video I'm going to be sharing exactly how much money I made my first 90 days as a member of the YouTube Partner Program. I'm also going to break down exactly what my journey to monetization looks like, and how much my small channel has grown month by month. What's up friends, my name is Jordan, and if you're new here, then I'm a former competitive bodybuilder turned software engineer and content creator. I made my very first YouTube videos in 2016 and 2017, which have since been archived because they were d awful. I picked content creation back up in the middle of 2021 when I started posting content for traveling and cooking. It was around this time that I was taking a planned three month sabbatical from work to go backpacking in Europe and I thought it might be a really cool opportunity to turn a childhood dream into reality. I had grown up watching Anthony Bourdain and other world travelers and I had always daydreamed about this idea of getting paid to make content where I could travel the world and get to experience other cultures. Naively, I thought this would happen overnight. And this was where I found my first little bit of success on YouTube. A few of my videos reached thousands of views and I gained a couple hundred subscribers. In my first year and a half of making content, I ultimately gained 355 subscribers and I had zero idea what I was doing. I had never watched any of the content you can find now on what it takes to be a creator and the psychology of retention and how to edit and how to make good thumbnails, etc. I was just turning on my camera, putting the thing out there and seeing what happened. I didn't even write scripts. I never looked at my analytics. I didn't know the first thing about editing a video, but I knew immediately that I liked it. When I first got back from the sabbatical was when I first started to play around with the idea of posting content on a schedule. Starting in February of 2022, I started posting content every single week and I did this for about three months. And this was done to resounding silence. Almost all the content I posted during this time was cooking related and on average, I got about 100 views per video with a couple exceptions. Making cooking videos is hard. <laughs> and I have so much more respect than I already did for creators like Joshua Weissman and Babish. And it also made it quite clear that I just wasn't cut out for cooking YouTube. Discouraged by this, I posted only a couple of videos from May to December of 2022, and then I completely stopped posting for a little bit over a year. So in February of this year, I decided to finally start trying to learn what it took to actually be a content creator. I dove headfirst into consuming all sorts of content around how you make a good thumbnail, how you write a good script, how you edit, how you film, Etc. 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 In my first video back, this review on my happy hacking keyboard, which I still love, actually did pretty well and continues to do fairly well. But more importantly, it was fun. I posted a video roughly every one to two weeks. My goal was and continues to be two videos a month. And in that first month back in February, I got 1.3 thousand views and gained a whopping 10 subscribers. In March, I posted two videos that only did okay. The videos I posted in February started to pick up a little bit more traction. This got me just about 2,500 views and 36 subscribers. April is when things finally started to pick up a little bit. I posted two videos that both did quite well, and I got 13,000 views and 183 new subscribers. Then in May, after more than seven years since the first video I posted and starting and stopping YouTube three times and posting 35 videos, I did it. I got monetized. I made a video titled, Everything You Know About Mexico Is Wrong, and it absolutely exploded. It ended up going relatively viral. At the time of making this video, it has 138,000 views, which still <laughs> blows my mind. In May, that video alone got about 65,000 of my 68,000 total views. I gained 972 subscribers and absolutely blew past the 4K threshold for watch hours, getting about 5.8 thousand. Now for those who don't know, in order to be accepted into the YouTube Partner Program, you need to have a thousand subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. A watch hour is just what it sounds like. It's an hour accrued of people watching your content. Now it's largely agreed upon by the community that 4,000 watch hours is much harder to get than a thousand subscribers. And had it not been for this video's performance, it would have taken me a really, really long time. When that video came out in May, I had just under 600 subscribers. I'd gained about 250 since starting posting again in February. Because of this video, I was eligible for the YouTube Partner Program a week after it came out. I applied immediately and I became approved as a YouTube Partner on May 23rd. They say it can take about a month to be approved, but in my experience and in the experience of every creator I've talked to or listened to, it usually only takes one to maximum two weeks to get approved. On my first day of monetization, 
May 25th, I earned $8.52. And even if it was less than $10 in a day, I had officially been paid to go on vacation. I had made a lifelong dream come true. Now, fueled by this sudden burst of success, in June I posted six long-form videos and 16 shorts. This, combined with the continued success of my Mexico City video, netted me another 53,000 views and a little bit over 420 subscribers. Of those 53,000 views, 28,000 were from this Mexico City video, 18,000 were from shorts, and the remainder were from some other long-form videos. Of the six long-form videos I posted in June, only two of them got more than 1,000 views. I did, however, double the revenue I had earned in May, which was pretty cool. Now I did something really interesting in June. I niched down into an area completely different than where I had found the most success in my content so far. When I saw Jeff Nippard's mega viral steroids are awesome video, I thought there was a really unique opportunity for me to enter the fitness space and share my story as someone who had nearly died from using anabolics in the past. And while this did generate some results, it was nowhere near the results I had seen making other forms of content. That has continued to be true with the other fitness-related content that I've posted, and so I've gone back to the drawing board a little bit. Actually, as of making this video, I'm still not even really sure what my niche is. But all of that's to say there's an important reality of content creation here, especially as a small channel. You're basically playing the lottery. Now, of course, you can do everything you possibly can to maximize your chances of winning the lottery, and some people will claim that luck has nothing to do with it. But at the end of the day, sometimes you'll just have a hit and that video explodes. And sometimes you'll post a video that only gets 50 views, even though you poured your heart and soul into it. That's a reality of this industry and pursuit. And it's something that you kind of have to accept and be willing to take on the chin if you're going to go down this path, which I can say, but that's been <laughs> profoundly difficult for me. Now in July, I slowed down my pace of posting substantially, partially because I had once again become somewhat discouraged by not having hit after hit after hit but also because I wanted to make sure I was set up to have a sustainable pace for the long term. I posted nine shorts and two long form videos. I had 85,000 views and gained 355 subscribers. And I made roughly the same amount of money I made in June, but a little bit more. Of those 85,000 views, 34,000 continued to be from my Mexico City video, 44,000 were from a few shorts I had that did well, and the other 7,000 were continued from my long-form videos. So far in August, I've posted two long-form videos and no shorts. This has brought in 12,000 views, 11,000 of which have been my Mexico City video, and I've gained 74 subscribers. I'm on pace to do about half of the revenue right now that I did in June and July, as the views from my Mexico City video continue to slow down and I haven't yet found as much success with anything else. So with all that out of the way, now that you understand my journey to get here, exactly how much money did YouTube pay me to be in the YouTube Partner Program for the last 90 days? Drum roll, please. $299.95. Now this is a far cry from the millions of dollars that you see some of the biggest creators raking in, sometimes even every month. But it's also far more than I ever expected to be making at this point in my journey. So when I first started making videos again in February, my goal was to hit monetization by my birthday, which was August 12th. I beat that by three months, which was incredible, still to this day, is incredible to me. Now, as a creator on YouTube, you can make your money a few different ways. The most obvious and well-known is through ad revenue, when YouTube sells slots of ad placements on your videos to advertisement companies, you ultimately get a slice of what that content earns. Every video from every creator gets sold at a slightly different rate, which we're going to talk about in more detail later, but this is called CPM, which translates to cost per thousand views on a video. In addition to ad revenue, you can also make money through things like super chats and super thanks, which is basically a fan leaving a tip in the comments section of your channel. And finally, you can make money by adding a shop to your YouTube channel or by creating a membership section where people pay a fee to get exclusive content. At this point, I've made all $299.95 exclusively from ad revenue. I've never gotten a super chat or a super thanks, I don't have a membership section, and while I'm working on a couple items for the shop, I haven't opened one yet. And I'm going to choose to believe my lack of super chats or thanks has nothing to do with me as a person. Now, breaking it down month by month, in May I made $60.46, all of which from long-form content 
almost all of that was my Mexico City video. In June, I made $105.21, and although almost a third of my overall views were from shorts, they only paid me like $1.50. Not all views are equal, and long-form content views will always pay you much more reviews than shorts do. I also find that long-form content is a much more reliable way to build engagement and foster a real community, although that's just my experience, and obviously there are tons of people having a really successful career in short form content. In July, I made slightly more, bringing home $113.84. I made a bit more off of shorts this go around as I had a few that did fairly well. They earned me about $7. And the remaining was from my long form content. My Mexico City video continued to do the heavy lifting, bringing home about $76.47. Now, interestingly, I had a video on TRT that did fairly well and it had a way higher CPM or cost per thousand views. In the same time frame, I only got about one tenth of the views on that video as I did on my Mexico City video, but it made about a third of the money. The exact CPM on my TRT video was $14.91, and of that, $5.25 ended up in my pocket. My Mexico City video, however, only has a CPM of $6.36, and of that, I take home between one and two dollars. My steroids are awesome reaction video fell squarely in the middle of those two it, with a CPM of $8.11. My Happy Hacking Keyboard Review also has a really high CPM at $16.43. However, that one has a much lower take-home pay for me, only giving me $1.26. Now, we don't have any insight into how this side of YouTube works. CPM and how much of that CPM you get is a complete black box. But I thought you might find that breakdown a little bit interesting. So there you have it, folks. A complete breakdown of my first 90 days in the YouTube Partner Program with exactly how much I made and where I made it from. We also talked about my exact journey posting schedule, where all my views came from, etc, etc. I've truly gotten to live out a lifelong dream this year, and I could not have done it without the people like you. Yeah, you watching this video right now. It might not be all that much money, I'm certainly not quitting my day job anytime soon, but it's far more than I ever expected to be making at this point, and especially from something that brings me so much joy and purpose. If you have a small YouTube channel that hasn't yet hit monetization, or if you're thinking about getting into the content creation game, I hope this video was useful for you and that you learned something. And if I could offer any advice through all of this, it's to just hit the dang record button and put the video out there. You'll learn way faster by doing that. And while there is tons and tons of amazing content out there that can teach you exactly how to think about click-through rate and enhance your retention and make better thumbnails, none of that matters if you're not just making the videos. And no matter how your videos are received, just release your expectations and keep going. It only takes one video to really blow up your channel and allow you to start living out a dream. Now, if you liked this video, make sure you do all the normal stuff, slap that like button, drop me a comment with what you learned, and make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you never miss another update from me. And with that, till next time, folks.